Well, myself is somebody who was 80 years old when I was lived in America for roughly the first 30 years, although I did travel abroad. And eventually, through various decisions, ended up living here and ended up in Leicester and ended up involved in building an arts center. And we got programs going, we got programs uh, based on art and disability. And one thing led to another, and we said to the vice chancery, could we have a space? But he didn't say no. And it all worked from there. And of course, I was involved in visual arts particularly, and music was added and other kinds of things. And we were all involved in, in the very much awareness that disability was a, was a major edge to that, not just for disabled people, but we wanted something which was inclusive. We had the good fortune of working with this astonishing oh man, uh, and he would come up in his Rolls Royce with his two members of staff, and we'd come out and meet him, and we'd discuss things with him, and he made a big dent in who, what was happening. So it was a huge adventure. We met people we wouldn't have met, and uh, and we were able to go much further than we had would have could have been. So I think if you cut us open, you'll discover there's a whole layer, which, uh, which is that. We wouldn't have local exhibitions by local people unless they were group exhibitions with some dis work by people who were with a disability in it. Um, and if we had a one-person exhibition, it would be somebody who had a disability background. And, and I think that worked because uh, there's a lot of very able people working in town who are working in the Lesser Society of Artists, etc. And they had an outlet or, already and we thought this is not, the job is not to pr provide that. And I would paint on Wednesdays, and I took it as the day I work. And I, I didn't, I did, I don't work when I feel like it. I work because that's what you do. Because you, if you wait for inspiration, you probably are in big trouble. So I had that, and I had some exhibitions in Vaughan College, which was our um, the adult education place in town, and in the University and Center Northampton, where I was responsible for the art program there. So there was a lot going on and I was teaching practical courses, organizing them uh, and developing new things. We got quite a lot involved in sculpture and again Sculpture for the Blind became one of the important edges. That was a very interesting period in higher education where reach outreach to the community was seen to be very important and it was a great luxury. I like to work intricately, but I change, obviously, one does with time, what, you, what you're interested in, what materials you use, that kind of thing. There's always been a landscape element there. There's always been a pattern element. I'm interested in um, sort of psychological and pious, almost, uh, elements of meaning of life and things like that, appreciation of art more than art history. So I've done a lot of things, and one of the luxuries of teaching a whole course on Rembrandt and a whole course on Michelangelo is you just got to dig in. And you, uh, I probably wouldn't have quite the discipline to go that deep unless I knew I had a course there. You have to find other angles on it. And I've done quite a lot of weekend courses, but mostly looking at the pictures uh, rather than history as primary. So it is, it's, they're usually called understanding art. So that's a bit of a luxury to be able to do because you can dig hard and get the pleasure of learning. So, uh, there we are.